I'm Jody Sanders and this video is brought to you by Baby Lock. Today we want to take a look at sowing curved seams. Sometimes that can seem really intimidating. Straight seams are certainly easier, but with a couple of tips and tricks, you'll be sowing these Drunkard's Path blocks in no time. So we're going to sew two pieces together for this Drunkard's Path block. We have our crust piece, which is this outside piece, and then we have the pie piece, which is kind of this center piece with the curve. Now, these particular pieces were cut with a die cutting system. So, you may notice there's a little bit of a notch on each piece. And that's where you're going to start matching your pieces together. If you haven't cut your pieces with a die cutting system or with a pattern template that has that notch, what you're going to want to do is to fold both of these pieces in half to find the center. And then you're just going to do a little bit of a finger press so that you know where that center is. A little bit of a press right there for that one and then you can open it back up. You can lightly see that. Then I'm also going to take this piece and fold it in half and that way you know where the center is for your two pieces. And again, you can kind of see the little bit of the mark there. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna place these two pieces together. And you'll either place them on the notch or on the fold that you finger pressed. So you can see right here, we have those pieces together. This is actually where our first pin is gonna be placed. So we're gonna take a pin pin it right like that. I know this doesn't look right, but I promise you as we continue to pin pieces, we are doing it correctly. The next place that we're going to pin is we're going to take an end and we're going to meet it with the other end and we're going to place another pin about a half of an inch down from that next seam there. Then we're going to go to the opposite side and again, we're going to turn it so that we're matching and we're going to place another pin on that end. Again, about a half of an inch down from where your seam is going to end. Now, right now, it looks like there's a lot of rumpling going on and there is. But remember, we have bias and a curve, so as we sew that, that's all going to ease in together. Now, it's totally personal preference, but if you'd like, you certainly can add more pins. And I think I'll add one more in between these two, about right here. So you can just feel gently, see where that next pin should go, and go ahead and place that next pin. Now, the thing to remember with the bias is that you can stretch it at any part. So whether you're cutting or you're pinning or you're sewing, you can stretch that bias. So you don't want to handle it too much. Handle those pieces gently. We're going to place one more pin there and then we're going to be ready to start some sewing. So now we're going to go ahead and sew along this curved seam. If you have a quarter inch foot for your uh, machine, that would be a great time to include that. You can see this one has a little bit of a flange and so my fabric is going to be butting right up against that and that's for my quarter inch seam. Also, if you have a machine where you have the needle down position, that also is helpful. It's almost like having a third hand as you're working these curves through the machine. Um, having that needle down position allows you to stop and start and remove your pins easily. So we're going to go ahead and even though I have a pin right here at the beginning of my seam, I'm going to take just a couple of stitches to get that seam started. Then I'm going to stop and I'm going to remove my pin because I never want to sew over pins. The other thing you can do is that if your machine has a uh, like a slow or medium or fast on it you also can move that and you can make your machine go slower otherwise just step off the foot pedal so 
So we're going to go ahead and keep sewing along that curve. You can stop every now and then and again you see it's nice to have that needle down position. You can readjust sewing along the curve. Now I'm going to take my pin out again because I don't want to sew around on the pin. And we're just going to keep sewing. Again, removing the pin. And then you can have your hands just kind of readjust those fabrics. Easing in anything. The main thing that you don't want is a little bit of a ripple or a fold. So you can just be continually adjusting. And then we're almost to the end here. I'm going to remove my pin. And so that last little bit. So I've taken the block over to my ironing board and we pressed it back. We have pressed the seam toward the crust piece, away from the round circle, outside circle of the pie piece toward the crust piece. So you can see it kind of naturally wants to go that way. This happens pretty well with a larger pieces or a more gentle curve. If you have something that has a little more of a curve, a tip that I can tell you that you could do is you can take a small scissor and you can cut just right up into that seam. You don't want to cut into the seam itself, but you could make small snips every couple of inches and that also helps ease that curve a little bit and that can also help your block lay a little more flatly. That's how easy it is to do curved seams. Now some other projects you could try besides the Drunkard's Path would be an apple core or a robber, robbing Peter to pay Paul or a double wedding ring. They all have curved piecing and they all could use the same technique. We hope you'll give it a try.